Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. A while ago, I had my colors analyzed and in the process, I learned some new style lessons that I wanted to share with you today. Not surprisingly, they're mostly related to color. So whether you're looking to shake up your style a little or just find the clothing that suits you the most, I hope this video is helpful. There were so many style lessons and rules that I learned that if I follow every single one of them, I feel like my style will be incredibly boring. So I've picked out a couple of the ones that really resonated with me and still give me a lot of room to express myself and play around and experiment because I feel like fashion should be fun and it's not fun for me if there is a formula that I have to stick to. The color system we used in the session was called the Absolute Color System and there are 18 groupings and it's meant to be a more modernized version of the seasonal color analysis. Modernized meaning that it takes into account the equatorial and Asian regions um, when it's doing the color analysis. The palette I was given is the Rich palette and it's one of 18 possible palettes. Every palette has three main qualities. Uh, the first one is intensity, so how bright or smoky the colors are. You can see that my colors are bright rather than smoky or muted. The second quality is value, which is how light or dark the overall palette is. And if you look through my colors, we can see that the majority of them are medium to dark. The third quality is undertone, whether it has warm, which is a yellow base undertone, or cool, which is a blue base undertone. You can see the undertone of my palette is warm. If we're talking about the seasonal color analysis, I couldn't find a direct match for the palette I was given. However, I feel like the closest one for me would be dark autumn, followed by bright spring. My palette has the bright colors of bright spring, but everything else I feel like fits more into dark autumn. Within this color palette, my color analyst recommended me a handful of shades that she felt especially suited me. I can definitely see a pattern of the shade tea being darker and there aren't too many bright colors included. Today's video is in partnership with Majuri and it's always a pleasure to work with them. Today I'm wearing this necklace that basically allows me to put different charms into the clasp. It has a clasp ring that opens and on the clasp I have three of my favorite charms. I have a scarab charm which I took off another necklace and put into the clasp. Next to that I have a green stone pendant and I've really been obsessed with this shade of green and it just adds a little bit of color to my stack. To add a little bit of sparkle to the mix I also have a crescent moon added to my necklace. I especially love this necklace because of the clasp and the fact that it allows me to collect and layer my charms. So one day, if I wanted to switch it up a little bit, it's so easy to do and I can easily switch out any of these charms for another one in my collection. It makes the necklace feel more personalized and more unique to me and I just really love the clasp feature. The first style lesson I've been experimenting with in my wardrobe is going for more high contrast looks. So the outfit I'm wearing right now is a good example where I've gone for a lighter color and then a darker color. In this outfit, we've actually got very high contrast as opposed to low contrast when two shades are closer together on a color scale. The way I was taught in my consultation was to look at a scale from white to black and then to basically imagine these colors printed in black and white and figure out where they fall on the scale. The light yellow would fall quite light, close to white, and then the navy would be very close to black given how dark it is. This is a high contrast look. On the other hand, in a low contrast look, both of your colors might fall in the middle section of the scale. The reason I've been going for high contrast as opposed to low contrast is because of my color analysis. And we figured out that I have very fair skin, so my skin's about a two. And then in terms of my hair and my eye color, they're quite dark and they go up to pretty much a 9. So between 2 and 9, there's a lot of contrast and my clothing should try and replicate that for the most flattering effect. If you map out your features and find yourselves on opposite ends of the scale, then you are more high contrast. And then if you map out your features and you find them pretty close together, then you suit low contrast more. I really don't want to give off the wrong message and suggest to look good, we have to follow outfits that suit our contrast level. But rather, this is just one idea I've been experimenting with and I like it so far. This outfit is a really good example of the kind of outfits I've been wearing. I went for something really dark, something light on the trouser, and then there's a good contrast between the two colors. If I take another outfit I've recently worn, so this blue top and these beige trousers, We've got more of a low contrast look. And then, it's not that this outfit is awful, I actually still really love this outfit, but I do feel like this outfit enhances my features a little bit more compared to this low contrast look. 
look. Even when it comes to prints, I've been somewhat applying this rule where this is a high contrast print with the navy and the white and then I actually don't have a low contrast print top. So I thought I'd show you this bag which has more of a low contrast because a lot of the shades are closer together on the color wheel. Instead of white, we've got an off-white cream and then all these neutral shades are all lighter, making them sit closer together compared to the navy and the white. If you'd like to try this tip for yourself, figure out on the scale where your hair, skin, and eye color falls. And then basically try to replicate that contrast in the outfits. Not everyone's gonna be low or high contrast. You might find yourself in the midpoint somewhere and you will do the same thing and replicate that contrast in the look. In this example, we've got black and a cobalt blue. The colors are fairly close together on the dark side of the scale and this will be a low contrast look. This next outfit is a medium high contrast look with a true white at one side and then a medium shade of green towards the other. The third look is high contrast, falling at nearly opposite ends of the spectrum. And then the final look is low contrast, with these two medium to dark shades falling close together on the scale. If you've tried this way of dressing before, I would love to hear from you in the comments on whether you feel like it enhanced your features, did it make a difference, or just a little bit unsure. Does this rule mean that I'll never wear low contrast again? Um, absolutely not, I will still wear those outfits, but it does mean that I'll experiment more with high contrast and maybe wear those looks a little bit more. Something the stylist said was that wearing the right color can be like makeup because it brings out the color in our complexion and just enhances our features. So I actually want to apply this to earrings, um, which is a very specific topic, but I'll explain why. When I'm wearing very little makeup, I find that one of the things that really does help me feel more alive, more awake, is a gold hoop earring. For the longest time, I knew that I was more suited to gold jewelry than I am silver, but I was never 100% sure because I felt like I was somewhere in the middle. I recently did a test where without makeup, I decided to put on gold hoops and then compare that to silver. And then when you're not wearing makeup, I think it becomes incredibly obvious which one suits you the most. Gold for me just brings out a little bit of color in my skin, it makes me look alive. Whereas the silver just didn't do too much. I've got these silver earrings and I love them, but these are earrings I'm going to wear with makeup when I'm wearing blush, when I'm wearing lipstick. Whereas the gold is really versatile because when I am very tired, it helps to make me look more alive. Something I really recommend is finding the right shape of earring because it can really make a huge difference. I used to wear a lot of long earrings when I was younger and I just find it very unflattering because my face shape is quite long and it just really dragged my face down. Going for a round earring for my face shape feels a lot more balancing and it's why a lot of things I go for are round around my face. My hair is fairly round right now in the way it's styled. My earring is round. I often like a round neckline. I just like round things around my face. And that's just a personal preference. Some of my favorite earrings from Majuri include these hoops. These are thin oversized hoops and I really like these because they are very round, they're oversized so they make a bit of a statement but at the same time they're still quite thin and delicate in that sense. These earrings which I'm wearing throughout this video are a great everyday hoop. I wear this most days and my one is in 14k gold but they also have a great range of vermeil options as well. I'm going to link to my exact pair down below as well as a vermeil alternative. For you silver lovers out there, I really like this little silver hoop. It's a little bit daintier in size, but it's still quite chunky and it's weighty without being heavy. If you're looking for silver hoops, I feel like these are the ones I would recommend. While I've discovered that round earrings are the one for me, I definitely recommend experimenting. Maybe trying on some more angular earrings, some long earrings, as well as round, and then even varying up the size from small studs to bigger earrings to find out what your perfect earring is based on your preference and your face shape. So figuring out the shape of earring that you prefer most on yourself, figuring out the color of metal, for me can almost replicate the thing that makeup is able to do in bring out the color in our complexion and in just making us look our best. If you're slightly more in that neutral zone and you're deciding which metal looks best on you, the easiest way to do it is without makeup and seeing which one makes you look more tired and which one makes you look more fresh and lively. The first our lesson is around finding the best neutral and I was so happy in my consultation that it wasn't just about bright colors, that we talked about neutrals as well because finding the perfect neutral for me is probably the most important thing because these are the colors that I wear every single day. 
or almost every single day. I'm gonna show you the neutrals I was matched with and then tell you what I would do to find my perfect neutral if I was doing it again. So these were the five colors and I feel like what they have in common is that they're fairly deep shades and then they're also all slightly warm. They're not too warm, but they're definitely not cool. And we've got a navy, we've got two browns, a red and a gray. Of these colors, navy definitely made a lot of sense to me and it's just confirming something I've always known. So in my wardrobe, I've got a navy blazer, a navy skirt, navy trousers, navy knits. And I will say that probably navy is the color I wear the most. So it's something that I really like, I feel like it suits me, and now it's confirmed. I've also been recommended these two shades of brown, and they're all deeper, rich browns. It immediately made me think of this mango coat, which I wear all the time. And even though this coat is a little bit warmer, even though this coat is lighter, I still feel like the fact that I wear this all the time is telling that these colors may also work for me really well. And then we've got this gunmetal color, which I don't have a lot of in my wardrobe. So I'm a little bit uncertain, but this is a color I want to try on and see how I feel about it. And then we also have a red shade. This is a case where even though this red might suit me, I don't particularly love this shade of red. So I will be sticking to my browns and my navies as opposed to the red. I think our preference really is the most important thing because if it looks good but doesn't feel great, then what's the point? A lot of what we did in my color consultation was basically putting colors against my skin and trying to see whether it suited me. So a lot of this you can replicate yourself at home with the clothing in your wardrobe. The first thing we'll figure out is cool, neutral, or warm. Keeping in mind that any color can be warm or cool, I recommend trying something in a cooler gray and then a warmer brown and seeing how they look. If one of those is definitely better than the other, then it's telling you that maybe you suit cooler or you suit warmer. The next thing I would do is to try on navy, black, charcoal, and deep brown. And of these colors, figuring out which deep neutral is best suited to you. When I look at these side by side, I definitely prefer the navy on me as well as the deep brown. I would also do the same thing and compare medium neutral shades together and then compare light neutral shades together. So we should end up with one ideal dark, medium, and light neutral. The last thing I would do is try on a lighter color and then a darker color and see which one works best. Because I think that is also very telling of your perfect neutral. I tend to suit darker colors, but for many people, the lighter beige and the creams might look a lot better. So those are a couple of the tests I would do if you're at home trying to figure out your best neutral. In the fourth style lesson, I want to talk about the depth of color. So light, medium, or dark. And since a lot of the colors recommended to me were dark, I've recently had to play around with more dark blouses and dark tops in my wardrobe. I would say I naturally gravitate to a lot of whites and to a lot of lighter colors, but more recently I've actually incorporated more dark colors into my wardrobe. All of the clothing I have in my wardrobe I really love, I feel great in it, so they're not going anywhere. But the thing I want to get across is that I want to start experimenting with dark colors as well as continue to wear my light colors. Here are some dark outfits I want to wear more often. Here are some examples of medium depth outfits. And then light. After doing my color consultation, I actually decided to go from my balayage hair color to a darker shade. And this continues on the talk of intensity where I'm just starting to see that dark colors really do suit me a little bit better than the light to medium shades. So even though I feel like a lot of people might prefer the balayage, it's a bit more interesting, it's a bit more stylish, I honestly feel so much more like myself when I have my dark hair back. This is my natural hair color and even regardless of how it looks, I just feel a lot more comfortable and myself in it. I'm going to be sticking to this for a while now and I feel like this is something else that has come from the color consultation. Just embracing the darker shades, especially around my face. Slightly off track, but I've also done a ton of experimenting with haircuts over the years. I've had very long hair, I've had very short hair, I've had red hair, brown hair, very light hair, I've had it all. And I feel like I've finally settled on dark hair and then a shorter cut as my ideal haircut. It's been a long journey, but I feel like I've finally settled here. And I feel like finding a signature haircut, hair color, is actually so important in the overall feel of outfits because when I have long hair versus when I have short hair, I feel like a lot of my style actually looks different because this just feels a bit more modern to me and the long hair felt a bit more feminine and it can actually just change how the outfit 
the looks. So I wanted to quickly mention that to finish off this video. I don't talk about hair a lot. I'm not a beauty hair girl. I really don't know much about it at all. But I'm happy to have finally settled on something that feels my style. Those were the five lessons I've learned from the color consultation. There were honestly a lot of other things that we spoke about, but a lot of it I just didn't 100% agree with. So these are the five that I really like and I've adopted and started using in my styling. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I definitely have plans in the future of doing more of these color consultations and hopefully filming a portion so I can share that with you as well. So let me know if that's something you'll be interested in seeing and I can definitely schedule more appointments like this one. If you're interested in seeing this kind of content, I would also love to know some of the questions you'd like me to ask in the consultation so I can kind of get that information back to you in these videos. Thank you so much for watching this video and of course thank you to Majuri for kindly working with me again in this video. I will have all of the beautiful pieces including the necklace as well as the earrings linked down below if you'd like to check it out. Have a great week ahead and I'll see you next one. Bye!